Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about Huawei X79E5M motherboard for the LJ2011 socket. This motherboard has already been sent to my subscriber who won it during my last giveaway, thus I don't have it to show it, but I was able to finish my testing and prepare the presentation, that's why I'm going to tell you the important details and the important information about the motherboard. Let's start with the fact that first I have actually ordered another motherboard, which was this one, and according to the AliExpress page, this motherboard is supposed to come with the X79 chipset. And I wanted this exact motherboard because I wanted to be sure that I can overclock my E5-1650 to do my test and comparison against E5-2640 V3. Instead, I have got another motherboard, which is this one, which is Shramway X79E5M. The motherboard uses a different chipset, desktop chipset, not X79 and not C602. When I complained to the seller, it was a bit too late and I did not have an option to open an AliExpress dispute, thus the seller simply told me that this motherboard is better than the one I originally ordered and I shall not complain. So, let's talk about this motherboard, let's see the test results and decide if I shall or shall not complain. Starting with the motherboard specification. As you can see on the motherboard, you can find basically everything you need. Four slots for DDR3 memory, which are working in a quad-channel configuration, two PCI Express X16 slots, two PCI Express X1 slots, four SATA 2 ports, uh, two SATA 3 ports, and USB and audio connectors for the front panel. The USB 3.0 header is located over here, which is not very convenient, but it is available. For the chipset, the motherboard, at least the one which I have received, came to me with Q67 chipset. As it turns out, which chipset is used, it doesn't really matter on LJ2011 platform. I can still overclock my CPU and I can still overclock memory. If you're interested in specific numbers and specific models of the equipment used on the motherboard, just put the video on pause and take a look. But I will mention that the motherboard has a VRM system with a 6 plus 1 phases, so 7 phases in total, and each phase has two MOSFETs, one for 75 amperes, another one for 52 amperes, plus a MOSFET driver. All in all, not a bad power delivery system, but also not the best. Later on we will see how it handles overclocked E5-1650. So, let's start with the test results. Uh, when I was ordering the motherboard, I thought that uh, LJ2011 X79 platform is rather old and there shall be good BIOS options for basically any motherboard, but I was wrong. After searching and researching, I was not able to find a BIOS which would be definitely compatible with my Shuangwei X79E5M. Thus, I had to try many different BIOS options and finally I found a BIOS option which was compatible with the motherboard and everything was working fine. SATA ports, USB ports, smart fan, memory and PCI Express slots. This BIOS is called the 32S1 Tuning OS X mode, and the link will be available in the video description. Of course, you can also use the same BIOS but without OS X mode. The OS X mode is used to do Hackintosh on X79 platform, but it also doesn't hurt Windows, it's just some tuning in the BIOS. Much to my surprise, USB 3 ports are working OK on this X79 motherboard from Xuanwei. SATA ports are also working fine, both SATA 2 and SATA 3. Smartphone works for the first 4-pin connector where you connect your CPU cooler. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for the second 4-pin connector. The second 4-pin fan is rotating at a constant speed. Then the biggest problem is the PCI Express slot. For some reason, my first PCI Express X16 slot refuses to go anything above PCI Express 1.1. It doesn't matter if I install AMD graphics card, if I install NVIDIA graphics card, or even if I install an expansion card with an SSD. All devices are working maximum PCI Express 1.1. I have tried to use different devices, I have tried to use different CPUs, in all configurations, I was stuck at PCI Express 1.1. Thus, I can safely assume that it's the problem of the motherboard and not because of the devices or because of some drivers or some compatibility issues. 
Also, the second PCI Express x16 slot works as PCI Express 3.0 with no issues. Unfortunately, I ran out of time and didn't have a possibility to flush the original BIOS and check how the first PCI Express x16 slot is going to work with the original BIOS. But since the second PCI Express x16 slot works as PCI Express 3.0, I don't see how it could be a problem of the BIOS. Nevertheless, since I didn't test with the original BIOS and I didn't save screenshots when I was actually running the original BIOS, I cannot uh, safely assure you that it's definitely not the BIOS issue. Maybe it is a BIOS issue, but it also could be that my particular motherboard had some sort of a defect. The rest of the motherboard components are working pretty much as expected. PC Express X1 slots are functioning, they are connected to the chipset, but the power supply through these uh, slots are not enough to power a graphics card such as NVIDIA GT710 PC Express X1. If I install Wi-Fi expansion cards or Bluetooth expansion cards, these are working no problem, but NVIDIA GT710 needs some extra power. Then audio quality, I didn't have any issues, M.2 slot works no problem, PCI Express 3.0 x4, and network works as well. Moving on, we have some more issues, sleep mode doesn't work, for Linux I have tested Ubuntu 20.04, booting from NVMe drive works, Turbo Boost works no problem, RAM timings are not available in the original BIOS and that's why I needed to find a uh, modified option or a better option. Clear CMOS works and PCI Express buffer caching doesn't work, or at least I was not able to find the settings in the BIOS. PCI Express buffer caching is when you want to install an expansion card with, for example, two NVMe SSD drives, and they shall be connected to one PCI Express X16 slot, but each of them are working as PCI Express X2. So on this Shuangwei X79E5M, I did not find the corresponding features in the BIOS. VRM thermals were actually not that bad. With my E5-1650 overclocked to 4.2-4.3 GHz, after half an hour and a 64 stress test, I have got about 70 degrees Celsius on the VRM radiator. But there is also a negative thing. After I took off the radiator, I have figured out that the physical height of the VRM MOSFETs and the VRM MOSFET drivers are not the same. The drivers are slightly higher than the MOSFETs, which means that you need to use a thick thermal pad to be able to have some sort of a contact between the MOSFETs and the radiator, otherwise the heat will not be transferred from the MOSFETs to the radiator, since the drivers are preventing the radiator from touching the MOSFETs. It also means that if you're going to use dirty, cheap, bad quality thermal pad, the heat will be trapped by the thermal pad and will not be delivered from the MOSFETs to the radiator. Thus, you need a thick and high quality thermal pad with this solution where the drivers are higher than they supposed to be. It is also worth mentioning that uh, the small screws which are mounting the VRM radiator on this motherboard were destroyed or damaged and it was a pain to unscrew them and when I was mounting the radiator back onto the motherboard I had to use my own screws. This is not that much of a deal but it also indicates uh, of a bad quality assurance and a bad quality control on the assembly line of these X79 motherboards from China. Additionally, I have also tested the restore on AC power loss function and on Shuangwei X79E5M it works. From the extra notes, we have non-working temperature sensors as with most of the other Chinese X79, X99 motherboards. With my E5-1650, I have tested DDR3 ECC as well as standard non-ECC memory, both are supported. And I also tested overclocking memory to DDR3-2133. Unfortunately, none of my memory kits are stable at this frequency, thus I cannot say that the motherboard is stable itself, but it is possible to set this frequency system boots, but my memory I know for sure is not stable at this speed. For the overclock in my 1650 on this motherboard was not stable at frequency 4.3 GHz on all cores. Unfortunately, for all cores, maximum I could go with was 4.2 GHz. For four cores, I can set 4.3 and for two cores, 4.4 GHz. This was the maximum stable overclocking option for my Shuangwei X79 E5M and E5 1650. 
Apart of FIFA 1650, I have also tested FIFA 2689, FIFA 2650 V2, and FIFA 2670 V2. All of these CPUs worked on Shuangwei X79 E5M with no issues. Here, it's important to mention that the Xeon E5 V2 CPUs do not support overclocking DDR3 memory to DDR3-2133. But E5-2689 can be overclocked to DDR3-2133. Let's make a conclusion for Shuangwei X79 E5M. In my opinion, this motherboard is pointless. Right now on AliExpress it goes for about 80-90 euros and sometimes you also have to add something for the shipping and also you may be charged for VAT when the motherboard comes to your country. Thus the motherboard price may be a bit over 100 euros. And with this money you can pick X99 platform, you can pick AM4 platform and you can pick LJ1200 platform. Nevertheless, if you definitely need an X79 motherboard, the pros of X79 E5M would be quad channel memory, NVMe, SATA, VRAM, and expansion slots. But expansion slots are also the minus, because in my motherboard, PC Express X16 slot, the first one, didn't work any faster than PC Express 1.1. I hope this is a problem with my particular motherboard and not a widespread defect for all of this motherboard because if it is so it is a big disaster but anyway this indicates of a poor quality control of these uh, x79 motherboards and from the less significant issues i can mention the bad bias which does not have memory timings and is not possible to overclock if i to anything higher than 3.9 gigahertz then we also have non-working sleep mode, and we also have a run ratings for temperature and power sensors. Overall, my score for the motherboard would be just 6 out of 10. In the video description you will find a link where I bought the motherboard, even though I do not recommend buying it. As I said, it is better to take a look at X99, LJ1200, and an AM4 platform. Still, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, I hope I have helped someone, Bye-bye.